There's nothing quite like kids killing kids and some bad things happening to kids and kids becoming murderers because of those bad things that happen to kids to let you know you had a pretty grim reading month. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly wrap up this time for August of 2024. It's a very, very dark month as, uh, you know, all things are to be expected when you have uh, apparently one of the grimmest books ever and you're making sure you read more horror as time goes by. But it was a very fun reading month and we're going to kind of talk about that today. Pick our book of the month and all of those fun things that a wrap-up does entail. Let's begin like usual, guys, talk about what I read in the month of August. Well, I read four novels and I'm in the middle of a fifth one that's not quite complete. So we're going to kind of count that towards September, but I figure I'd give it like a a little mention here. Uh, Let's begin uh, with the first one was Black House by Stephen King in collaboration with Peter Straub. This is the sequel to The Talisman, a book that I was very lukewarm on. I felt like I was kind of in the same seat with this one. This one, I felt like uh, I I liked some of the things that I felt like Talisman did wrong, but I felt like it did wrong some of the things that Talisman did right. So it feels like if you combine the two books together, I might have one really, really amazing book. Uh, in the end, it wasn't a book that I would say I disliked a- a- at all. It was just, it was one that took, it took too long to get going. Then I felt like when it finally did get there, it was like, well, I kind of wish it would have taken its time once it did get there. So a very overlong book. And again, maybe I'm just saying I'm not really down for the Stephen King collaborating with anyone else because I feel like his books do tend to get over long at times. And I feel like when you're collaborating with something, it feels like the two of them might not have ever wanted to kind of cut each other's work at all. So uh, I think that's why they kind of get bloated a little bit. But it was a it was a fun follow up to uh, to Jack's story, I think. And uh, all of the Dark Tower tie ins made it a worthwhile read. Uh, I did talk about the darkness that comes before on the channel. That was one that uh, was very very uh, messed up. I think that's the word you would put it. But I, I had those I had those warnings coming in about how you know you think you've read Grim Dark, but you've never read Baker before. Uh, this book was very very good, and I, I talked about it at length on the channel. But it, it will. It's one of those where I say, hey guys, make sure you're in a good place when you read it because it can make you feel a little depressed, or maybe like you need to take a, a shower after you read it for a little bit because it can be a hellscape at times. But I mean that in the best way if you're into those kinds of stories. Boys in the Valley by Philip Fricasse. Kind of the same thing. Uh, when you are dealing with uh, maybe a little bit of uh, possession and some kids killing kids kind of thing, you know, I feel like this is very much a, a Children of the Corn meets the Exorcist kind of thing. Maybe some Lord of the Flies in there. It was really one of those where you're questioning who's on whose side and who's going to uh, be walking at the end of the story. Felt like it was a very, very good, good book and probably one of the best horror books I've read in the last few years. I liked it quite a bit. It was in contention. It still is. It's in contention for the book of the month here. thing that really held it back a little bit for me is you had so many characters. It's like the main two, I felt like you got to know more about them. But a lot of the other kids, you really they were blank slaves. didn't really get to know much about them. So when bad things happened, it kind of didn't really matter so much. But the overall story itself was excellent. It's one that I felt like it could have been a little longer honestly. And I think it could have fleshed out some of those characters and made some of those uh, character departures much more interesting. The Mercy of the Gods by James S.A. Corey. Uh, this one was kind of a letdown for me. And that, that's that's very sad because uh, I was very, very excited for this book because I love The Expanse. So the follow-up to it, it was going to have big shoes to fill. And as I put in that review, does the shoe fit? Not quite. And I think my my problem with this one is like I felt like the crew of the Rock Rosinati had such a great personality from go. They really did. And with this one, it was like the characters were just they were so forgettable. I had to keep flipping back to the beginning of the book to remember even who they were because the characters just really didn't differentiate themselves at all. And there was a ton of them. But as far as the ideas, the world, and how unique the alien life forms were, that was great. That was really, really good stuff. So a mixed bag for sure. And again, I wouldn't say it's one that I actively disliked. It was just, it had super high expectations, even if they were unfair, uh, of you know, that bar that the expanse set. So with that, it was, I, I wanted a little bit more. And right now I'm kind of teetering on, I don't know if I plan to continue with the series or not. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a letdown, but it's still, it's one of those I tell people, hey, read it yourself and make up your own decision. Don't take my word for it, please, because I do seem to be on an island with that. A lot of people do seem to really, really enjoy it, and I'm glad. I want people to enjoy things, 
Ordinary Grace by William Kent Kruger. That's the one that I'm reading right now that I'm not done with. Uh, so that was actually first planned to be the first book of September. So uh, yeah, yeah, uh, for Kuluminati that I'm doing with Brian and Dr. Philip Chase and uh, that's about Brian Abel Tubes, actually his creation. And John over at Talking Story, that's one that uh, we're all doing together. But I got a little bit of a head start there, but I have not completed it as of yet. But like I said, that's really meant to be a September read. So that leads us, guys, to that book of the month. If you've watched the weekly updates, if you've watched some of the reviews I've done over the course of the month, I don't think this one was hard to figure out. For me, it was The Darkness That Comes Before by R. Scott Baker. And I think the reasons are is because I feel like this, I almost feel like I found the secret, like there's something I've been looking for for a long time. And what I said was that this feels like everything I've been looking for in fantasy. I got sold it as, imagine if Frank Herbert wrote Lord of the Rings, or vice versa, if, 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 if J.R. Tolkien had wrote Dune and you set it across the backdrop of real history, like the Crusades era, and you just make it cruel and unforgiving as a punishing as that time period in, America, in, uh, in world history was, then uh, yeah, that's exactly what this was. It was not oversold to me. I adore Tolkien. Dune is my favorite book of all time, and this is scratching all kinds of itches that I didn't know needed to be scratched. So this, guys, uh, it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It was one of those where I say, this was a truly excellent book, but I can't recommend it to everybody because your mileage is going to vary so much with a book like this. The learning curve is high. I would say the first 200 pages, a lot of people are going to nope out. They're going to be like, nah, I didn't work on Malazan, and I, ain't gonna, I can't do it here either. So it's going to have a lot of things where you're learning a lot of names, a lot of lore, a lot of locations, a lot of histories, a lot of things going on, a lot of factions. You're trying to learn who all the allies are, what all the religions are. There's a lot at first, but if you stick with it, I felt like it was very, very rewarding. And about the about the 60% mark, or two-thirds mark of this book, I felt like it just hit another gear and never let go. And I felt like, okay, everything's clicked now. I wouldn't say I understand everything, but I understand everything enough without having to be like, okay, let me look at the glossary and see what that word means. I felt like I was in enough to be like, okay, let's keep going. And uh, yeah, very good. I enjoyed it immensely. I cannot wait to continue with it. If I had not to actually made my schedule for September and October already, I would be picking up book number two right now. That's how much I loved it. But it's just the, the all I ask for, and this is this isn't much to me, I don't think this is much, uh, to, is to say, hey, it's the last thing I want to think about before I go to sleep. It's the first thing I want to think about when I wake up with a book. And this is that. It definitely was. It's a book that I finished over a week ago and it hasn't left my head since. I'm like, I wonder what's going to happen with, with Kellis. What is Nair going to do? How is Arias going to handle all these things going on around him? What is Confus' real plan? Who size is he on? I have so many questions, but they're the best kind of questions where you're just starting to think, okay, I'm glad I don't have to wait because I would be theory crafting like crazy about this series. So again, it's not a book for everybody. Watch that review if you want to know why, because I do think it's uh, it's got a lot of content that's going to turn some people off. So listen to the good and the bad in that review. If the good sounds like things that you're into, check it out. If the bad raises some red flags, it may not be for you. But it was for me, and that is why it's my book of the month for August of 2024, just like Dr. Philip Chase and Joanna and Jordan over at iWizard told me that it would be. You guys we're correct. I stand corrected. You are an oak. Let's go ahead and move along to some channel growth here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's the same old story that we've had ever since the channel hack. 1,667 new subscribers. That is up 139 from July. 370,000 views, which is also up. This one, 13,000 from July and 48,000 hours wash. Also up. 4,000 from July. And you're like, Mike, why so glum? That's three green arrows. But you understand that last month was the worst month I'd had on the channel since 2019, which is the first year I started the channel. So it was a uh, really, really, if it went down again, it'd be like, well, damn, is anybody watching? But uh, yeah, you try not to let yourself get down on that. But I, again, I feel like this is just the new normal. I have three plus months of data on this now since the hack, and it doesn't seem to be changing. So this may be the new normal. So uh, you guys that have wanted this segment to be a lot shorter, uh, it, there you go. That's it. That's all I have for it. We're going to move along now to my most popular content for the month. Now, I did three live streams, three short-form videos. That's ones that are like less than 10 minutes, and 12 full-length videos, which is my standard 19 to 22-minute video. Uh, I don't count weekly updates when I'm doing my most popular content, even though that is some of the more popular content on the channel. I feel like I like to save these rankings here 
for original content or, you know, just something that is a little different than just a vlog wrap up or whatever. Because if not, it would be like three of them would be weekly updates. Uh, the best Grimdark series I have read and those I still want to read. That is at 20 thousand views. It was really surprising. I, I know that there was a lot of uh, Grimdark fans on the channel. I didn't think there was that many though. So it was one I thought, okay, I don't think that very many people are asking about, they're asking for this video. But I felt like I got enough recommendations. I have enough people asking me when I talked about those First Law editions I got from Broken Binding. Enough people asking me, hey, what are some other series like First Law? And I'm like, I don't think there's anything else like the First Law. But I think here's some series that you will like. And then I also talked about five series that kind of were on deck. One of them was this, which I have since started. And you guys were right. It was very good. And that would probably be in that top five list now. But uh, yeah, it was just my five favorite Grimdark series. And five that I said was really on my radar because of you guys that I want to read. And it's a fun conversation. Of course, the conversation always comes down what is Grimdark and what is not. And I think that's a conversation we'll never have a true answer for. But I do my best in that video. My July book haul is at 10,000 views. Nothing I love more than to say thank you for the very kind souls who decide to send me something every single month. And if it's an indie author, I can, uh, you know, give them a shout out. If it's just me saying thank you to people like Broken Binding or, or uh, uh, for Folio Society now who started sending me things, I can't say thank you enough. I like to take that opportunity to do so. But mostly uh, the viewers who take something you know, take their hard-earned money and send me something. That's just, that's amazing. You know, as, as rough as some people are having it right now, that's a really, really, just a blessing that you guys would do that for me. And I want you to know how much I do appreciate it. So that's really the, what book hauls are for me. Red, Re Red Rising, Red Rising, that's good. Red Rising and Sun Eater, stop comparing these two series. That's at 9,000 views. This is one just, I seem like every every Red Rising video I put out, I'd have someone in the comments just dunking on it saying Red, uh, Sun Eater was better. And every Sun Eater video I have, be somebody dunking on it saying it's too slow, Red Rising was better. And I was like, why did these two become rivals? I don't even understand. I feel like the the, the, the two authors have more in common than the actual series do. Yeah, they both both love you know, ancient Roman history. Well, what guy doesn't? You know, and I feel like they, they put that in space somewhere. That's really the only comparison I see between the two. They have a first person uh, narrative by a, a male protagonist, you know, and, and Red Rising even kind of goes multi POV later in the series. But I kind of go through the, the, the what I see are the similarities, what people might actually draw that conclusion, but then go through all the differences, and there's a lot of them. And just really just saying in the end, it's you don't have to tear one down to build up the other. They're both amazing series. They both might be for different types of readers, but I think that you know there are readers like me who like both those styles, and I think that there's room on our shelves and in our brains for both of these series, and I do love them both. I just want people to stop dragging one to build up the other one. My Darkness That Comes Before Review. This is encouraging. 9,000 views. Uh, reviews don't really do very well on the channel. I mean, I did three of them this month, and I think the other ones are sitting under 3,000 views right now. Uh, so I know there's a, a lot of excitement. There's a lot of curiosity about this. It's kind of I feel like this series is right there with Malazan, and that so many people have been interested about it because they hear how dense and how difficult it can be to read, and they kind of want to know. They kind of want to know, is this something that would be for me? But it's also just been a lot of people. I Since 2019, I've been having people tell me, you've got to start this series immediately, especially how much you love Grimdark. I think you love it. You guys are right. You guys are right. And I'm glad I could do that review. And you can tell in that review how genuinely excited I am about it. Because, I mean, there's a couple of times where I almost feel like I got to take a deep breath because I'm just so excited talking about it. So, yeah, it does feel like I've found the next big thing in my own personal reading library. My end of summer live stream is at 7,000 views. I just haven't done a live stream in a while, and I just like to do that. I like to do a nice AMA every once in a while. Just, you know, shoot the shit with your readers, you know, or your viewers. Let them know what you're up to, you know, what they ask recommendations, things like that. Hell, they would ask anything, music, movies, sports. I got all kinds of questions in that, and I always love to answer that and just kind of hang out with you guys for two to three hours. It's a lot of fun for me to kind of go back and forth with y'all. Uh, some favorites that I had that didn't quite hit these numbers. Uh, I got to say that Author's Corner I did with Blake Crouch. That was a lot of fun for me because Blake Crouch may be my favorite contemporary author right now. I love everything he's doing. Uh, I feel like he has kind of filled those shoes that were missing for me since Michael Crichton passed away. And he's just such a genuinely nice guy. And in that conversation, we kind of wanted to focus on, you know, what is it like adapting your work for the screen? You know, because he was the writer and showrunner for the Dark Matter adaptation on Apple TV. And kind of just want to talk about that process. And he lays out some brutal truths in there about what it is like getting yourself on the screen and how you do, how much you do have to fight, you know, to keep things the way that you want to keep them. So it was a, a fun conversation and he was generous enough to, to do it live and take questions 
from the audience as well that were about other things, and that was a lot of fun. And what I learned from that is I need to read Dracula's, apparently. That's one of his I haven't read, a collaboration that I need to read by Blake. Some September goals before I go. I can't really say anything about the algorithm anymore. Like I said, we're three months out from the channel hacking. So I think with me is just, you know, focus on just keeping the main thing the main thing. That's what I'm going to do is just kind of keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, in, in the end, I've always said this is something that I do for fun. This is not a job. I don't depend on this for, you know, my living or anything like that. So it, it, that, that in, the, in the end, that all means nothing, really. Uh, I am goal driven and I do like to follow numbers and statistics and data analysis. That's what I do for a living. So I like to kind of look at those things and keep an eye on those things. So uh, it, it's a bummer if you feel like your channel is losing growth, you know, that, that, that's, that does stink. But, uh, you know, hey, again, in the end, I've got 120 something thousand people who want to talk with me about books, man, that's more than I ever could have dreamed of. And I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to focus on trying new things and trying to stay consistent with what I have been doing. I'd like to continue this multi-genre format I'm doing each month. You know, one horror, one fantasy, one sci-fi, one miscellaneous book. I'm going to do that for about two more months. I'm going to do it for September, which I already planned, and October spooky season because I already had those planned. But in November, I think I'm going to get back to the old ways of just kind of reading what I want. Just want to make sure I am more open to put a horror book or a sci-fi book on my TBR each month instead of feeling like I can only cram it in one month, you know, sci-fi September or spooky season. But uh, I, I think the... The sabbatical on the big books is coming to a close, and it's uh, we're going to have some big books on the on the TBR here again starting in November. It's going to be very exciting. So uh, for this fall, it's just you know, hey, just make sure everything goes smoothly, getting the kids back to school and things like that as we shuffle into the final quarter of the year. It's going to be very exciting. Got some fun things on the horizon, some collaborations coming up. I'm very excited to do, and uh, yeah, it's just been a a pretty fun month on this end. I'd like to know how it went for you guys. What was your book of the month? Did you like any of these videos I've had this month? What was your favorite? You know, hey, what if you read? Have you read this? I'd love to know what you think about this because I've had a lot of people being like, okay, hey, from what you told me, yeah, I realize it's probably not for me. And other people have been like, hey, that sounds awesome, right up my alley. I'm going to try it right away. So I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about that or any of these other things that we talked about. So drop in the comments, guys, and I will talk to you there.